So, you may have heard this phrase, finite state machine, before, but what exactly is it all about? A finite state machine is a method of modeling a system comprised of a limited number of modes. Depending on which mode it's in, the machine will behave in one manner or another. And while finite state machines can be used to describe items both natural and man-made, for historical reasons the term most commonly refers to computing systems. The concept was developed in the 1950s to describe early computers, which were often compared to their mechanical or electrical machine equivalents. Only later did people realize that finite state machines could be applied to a broader class of problems. Now, there are many ways of expressing finite state machines, though a graphical approach is often the one taken. State transition diagrams are one way to visually characterize a particular system. Let's explore how they work using an oven's logic as an example. The modes in the machine are drawn as a shape, usually a rectangle or circle. This state transition diagram shows an oven that is off when no one is using it or heating when someone gets hungry and decides to bake cookies. Now usually when you plug in an oven, it doesn't immediately start baking. To reflect this behavior, the state machine starts in the off mode by default, which we indicate with an arrow. It turns out that any arrow you see in a diagram like this represents a transition. Arrows which connect one state to another are pathways that enable you to switch between them. The rule for when a transition takes place is displayed next to the corresponding arrow. In our example, the transition from off to heating happens when someone presses the oven's bake button, which we refer to as the baked pressed event. Similarly, we go back to the off state when someone pushes the off button. Now, once you turn an oven on, the heating element doesn't stay active indefinitely. When the oven approaches the desired temperature, the element cycles on and off to maintain that temperature. So, let's add a third state called idling, which represents the situation where someone is baking, but the heating element is off. When the oven gets too hot, it goes to this idling state, and it returns to heating as the temperature drops and the oven gets too cold. Now, when you look at this diagram, you might see a slight problem with the logic. What's going to happen if you want to turn the oven off while the system is idling? Well, when the off button is pressed, nothing is going to happen in this situation because we lack the necessary transition to get us back to the off state. Therefore, we need to add another transition from idling to off with the appropriate event beside it. With that, we have a functioning oven prototype and have introduced the standard elements of a finite state machine when represented as a state transition diagram. The basic building blocks are states, transitions, and the events that serve as the rules for those transitions. Of course, things get more complex than this, and we'll need to leverage other diagram concepts to represent additional details of an oven or other systems of our choosing. But for now, you've got the big picture.